If you turn on the telly and watch CNBC and people are discussing the stock market during a period of fear and anxiety, you'll often hear them ask their guests, uh, is this the bottom? Is this the time for investors to step in? If I have a lot of cash on the sidelines right now, is it time for me to step in at the bottom and buy right now at a significant discount? And this is a very reasonable question to ask, right? If you have tons of cash on the sidelines and you're looking to deploy that capital, you know, no one wants to be the person that uh, deployed it at all time highs and immediately witnesses a 30% decline in their money and it's gonna take them a long time to get back to even, right? So you're trying to buy low, but also, as we all know, sometimes you try to buy low and you catch a falling knife and stocks continue to tumble, right? So in this series, I'm going to discuss and code some indicators that market timers attempt to use to determine when a significant bottom has occurred and when a new bull market is about to start. I'm going to revisit the topic of the fear and greed index and update some of the historical uh, values and back tests that I've written in the past. I'm also going to discuss the breath thrust indicator that attempts to detect a sudden change in market momentum during a compressed period. So I'm gonna be talking about the Zweig breath thrust here that occurred in January of 2019, which was a very significant market bottom. I'm also going to discuss breakaway momentum and the Whaley breath thrust. And these are discussed in a few places, including this article uh, on Humble to the Market, which happened uh, January 7th of 2019. And he said, uh, a rare, what's my credit card limit buy signal. And this article discusses a number of significant buying opportunities when this uh, breath thrust signal occurred. So you can see there in 2009, there in 2011, uh, a continuation in uh, looks like late 2013. And also this occurrence in uh, 2015 was a significant buying opportunity. There is a trading view version of this that's coded by the popular uh, PineScript author, Lazy Bear here. And I've added this indicator under trading view here. So you can see the low in December of 2018. And then you can see the sudden change in momentum and the buy signal here in January uh, 2019. And you can see there was a new bull run that lasted all the way till January of 2020. I'm also going to discuss a couple of different variations of this, including the Whaley breath thrust that's described in this uh, article or this paper, Planes, Trains, and Automobiles by Walter Whaley. So a study of various market thrust measures. I'm also going to discuss this article on breakaway momentum by Walter Diemer. He's a, a market timer who's very active on Twitter. So you can actually follow this guy. You can see here on March 24th of 2020, which was during the COVID crash, he was looking for breath thrusts uh, at the bottom right there. And in this article, he discusses the advanced decline ratio. And when that number exceeds 1.97 or about two there, and we'll discuss how to calculate that. But he lists all these different dates when this particular uh, situation occurred and it, there were great returns after that. He's also known for this quote, when the time comes to buy, uh, you won't want to, right? And we've all seen that play out before where there's been a significant crash in stocks here, but uh, when the time actually came to buy, everyone's just expecting another leg lower. And so he focuses on the situation where there's enough momentum in the opposite direction that it really is the time to buy. So if you've been sitting on a significant sum of cash that you've been looking to deploy, but you've been a little bit fearful, maybe walking through this data will help you uh, quantify some of your decision-making whenever you invest that money. So in this series, I'm taking a little bit different approach here. I'm gonna try out using Jupyter Notebooks and Google Colab. It's this interactive notebook environment where you can write code in line and see the output right there. And you can just run this notebook in the cloud. In the past, I've said I wasn't going to use this approach because uh, as a software engineer, typically I'm always uh, using Visual Studio Code or a full-blown IDE to develop. And so I didn't really think this was a realistic way uh, that I code. For, but for projects like this that are like exploratory programming where I'm writing some pros and sharing some code and discussing my thought process, I thought this be, would be very useful. And also I'm discussing a possible opportunity I have later down the road where I might be an instructor in a class that uses a Jupyter Notebook. So I wanna gain some practice and familiarity with this and start to use this as a teaching tool. And I was also recently watching this YouTube video called I Like Notebooks by Jeremy Howard. And he's a well-known uh, machine learning uh, instructor and he teaches deep learning through the site Fast AI. And he did this hour long video on why he likes using Jupyter Notebooks. And I thought I would give it a try as well. There's an argument here on whether you should use Jupyter Notebooks versus uh, just a full blown I IDE. And so he argues with this guy, Joel Gruss here, who wrote, I think it's data science 
uh, from scratch here. And this guy hates notebooks and this guy did a talk called I Like Notebooks. So I'm gonna try notebooks for this particular series and then I can just walk you through this code and share it with you. And I think it'll uh, end up making the videos go a little bit quicker if I do it this way. So that's enough talk. Let's go ahead and get started with the discussion and the code. So let's start off with fear and greed. I've discussed this in the past. It usually starts off with this quote by Warren Buffett, be fearful when others are greedy and be greedy when others are fearful. A great quote, we love it, right? But how do we actually know when others are being greedy and fearful? Well, you can kind of tell uh, anecdotally, right? So you think of different periods of time, for instance, during, uh, I think it's February of 2021, I got caught up in it, right? I was talking about, I even did a video on like ARK Invest and Wall Street bets at the time and, and people are trading meme stocks, they're throwing money uh, into every single stock that Kathy Wood recommends, right? I said like, oh, everything she's touching seems to turn into gold, right? And that was like an indicator basically of the top there and those uh, stocks proceeded to decline by like 70% or something like that, right? And so that was a sign of greed and likewise there's periods of extreme fear, for instance, during 2008 and 2009, where it seems like stocks are never going to go up again, or during the COVID crash where stocks just declined every single day, it seems like for a few weeks there, and everyone's like, oh man, the economy is never going to recover. And it turns out it doubled like a year later, right? So how do you look for fear and greed in data? How do you measure this objectively? Well, uh, I've talked about a number of these measures in the past. The first method is the AAII sentiment survey, right? And one way to determine whether people are fearful or greedy is just to ask them, right? And so this is just a poll that's been running for decades now, asking the members of this uh, Association of Individual Investors, are you bearish or bullish over the next six months? And you can see right now we're in a period of a lot of fear, right? 48% of investors are bearish, even though stocks generally have gone up over time, right? So that's a pretty a bearish number. Even the one year bearish high here is 53%. And what we can actually do here, they actually published this historical sentiment data here, and you can download the complete historical data. And I've done that right here. And you can see we have all this data on whether people are bullish, bearish, or neutral since 1987. So we have decades of evidence here, and we can take this and convert it to a data feed, and we can feed it to a backtesting engine like Backtrader and determine whether there's any significance here, if we can detect any buying opportunities when the market participants are fearful. And in the past, I've done exactly that, and I made a video about it, which I will pull up and discuss in a moment. The other popular indicator I've discussed is the CNN Fear and Greed Index, right? So they publish this little gauge here and it's a measure of several different components, right? So they take market momentum, strength, breadth, they look at the put call ratio, junk bond demand, volatility in the VIX, and safe haven demand. And you can see this little dial here. Uh, if it's here below 25, it's extreme fear. And so this is a very extreme fear uh, measure right here, over here at one. And you can see this was taken March 12th. This was March 12th of 2020. During the COVID crash, extreme fear. So the S&P was actually at 2300 or 2400 at this particular moment in time. And this was a tremendous buying opportunity, it turns out, when every Everyone was selling, right? I think the ultimate bottom was about a week later on March 19th or 20th, everyone capitulated, right? And that was the time to buy. And if you rewind to not too long before this, like a month or two before this, it was actually at extreme greed, right? And how do you, how do I know this? I actually published the data set when I made that video called Sentiment, Fear and Greed. And I have this data set here and I put this in GitHub. If I look at the very beginning of 2020, so the first trading day of the year, January 2nd, 2020, uh, you see it was at 97, extreme greed right there. And why was there extreme greed, right? It didn't seem like you could lose for this entire period here, all the way till January of 2020, there weren't many significant drawdowns and you made a lot of money, especially uh, this particular point from like October, 2019 through January, there was no significant drawdowns. It was just buy, 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 and everyone was just getting greedy feeling good like they couldn't lose, right? So at this particular moment in time around here, uh, when everyone was greedy, turns out that was a good time to start cashing out. And then it turns out this particular moment in time when there was extreme fear, turns out it was a great time to buy because the S&P 500 was going to double in a record amount of time. So it only took a little over a year for the S&P 500 to double. 
Usually that doubling takes like 10 years or so, and we had that compressed into a little over a year long period, one of the greatest bull runs in history, right? After this extreme fear measure where everyone was selling their stocks. So if you've been watching this channel for a while now, you may be thinking, Larry, we've already talked about this in the past. Why are you revisiting this topic now? Well, there's a few reasons. Uh, number one, uh, during periods of fear in the market, I'm detecting some fear uh, right now. People are worried about a possible recession, uh, geopolitical issues out there right now. So there's a lot of fear right now. And so I've been watching this for possible opportunities because I actually do like to make some trades like this where I try to time bottoms and make a short term trade. Secondly, since I've discussed this in the past, I published these data sets here, but they're a bit outdated, right? And so I'm trying to do some videos where I clean up some outdated material I have. And if you click on issues here, people said, when will the data be updated? Same here. I subscribe to the same request, special interest fear and greed index data set, right? And some people will use this for class projects and copy this code and use it for other purposes. And I don't really provide some kind of service where I guarantee I'm gonna update all this old code and data sets because I'm just giving it and putting it out there. When I originally created this data set, it was actually very hard to get the historical data. I actually had to use the uh, way back machine and archive.org to look at like old values on the web page. You had to scream scrape it on a schedule. And I also needed to scrape some Twitter bot that was posting the daily uh, fear and greed values and put those all together into this data set. So it was kind of hard to maintain because CNN didn't make these values available. However, recently I was looking at the fear and greed index and noticed they've added this timeline tab here. And if you look at this tab, you can see this actually shows some historical values here on the screen for this data set. And I was wondering, is it possible to capture that data from here? And it turns out it is. If you go to view uh, developer and you go to your uh, JavaScript console, I was curious if this made an HTTP request and it does. So I'm going to uh, go to the network tab here uh, in my JavaScript console. I'm gonna refresh the page. So if I go into the timeline here and then I look at the HTTP requests that are being made in the network tab here, you see this one says uh, April 14th, 2022. So if I click on that, you can see it actually requests this URL here. So it's at production.dataviz.cnn.io, has fear and greed, graph data, and a date here. And if I look at the preview of the response here, you see this is actually a JSON structure, so they have their own API that powers this now. You used to not get this, it was just a static number that they put on the page. And you can see this has a fear and greed value, and you can see the previous month, previous week, previous year values, and the previous close, and the rating of neutral, and the current score with the timestamp. And it has this fear and greed historical here with data, and it looks like there's only one data point here. But what I noticed there is you can actually take this URL here, and let's put this in the browser. And I have the JSON view extension in uh, Chrome and you can see the JSON formatted here. And so if I change the date up here in the URL and let me move this down a little bit so you can see what I'm doing. So you can manipulate this date a little bit. And so if I do uh, 021, uh, 1221 or something like that, right? You can see I get a lot more historical values here. So you can see this Unix timestamp for the X value and the uh, fear and greed index value here for the Y value. And you can see the text rating right there. And so we can actually parse that out and update this data set. So why do people actually want this data set? Well, in the GitHub repository, I made this uh, backtest here using Backtrader, and it was a good example to use multiple data feeds in Backtrader. A lot of people had been asking how to use multiple data feeds and how to, how to use these custom uh, numerical values they may have calculated based on other attributes or properties of price and different things like that, how to put that in a data feed and feed it in and do a back test on it, right? And so what I did is take a historical data feed of the uh, put call ratio, the fear and greed index and the VIX as three different strategies. And I can run this here and you can see what that looked like at the time. And so if I run this, you see uh, the back test I had written created this chart and you can see the put call ratio values here. So you can see the put call ratio here that's very elevated right during this capitulation bottom. You can see this bottom here, put call ratio is high. You can see in 2016, put call ratio is high. You can see where I plotted the fear and greed index values here. And so you can see extreme fear at this bottom in uh, 2018. So that's 2018. This measure is near zero. So like one or two with single digit value of fear and greed. Uh, this was a significant bottom, single digit value of fear and greed here significant bottom and you can see the huge spike in the VIX here at the bottom and you can see these other spikes in the VIX. So this big spike in the VIX, usually around 36 or four, 36 or so I think was when these huge spikes in the VIX occur and during this decline off uh, 
was at the top in January of 2018. There was a spike in the VIX as well. And you can also see in 2016, uh, similar conditions were, had occurred. And I uh, ran this and you could see if you started out with a certain amount of cash, like $100,000 and how that grew over time. And you can play around with these different back trader strategies here, put call strategy, fear greed strategy, uh, VIX strategy here. And you can see how I run them, prepare all these data feeds, uh, connect them to Cerebro and so forth, right? But what's missing right now is a way to get the historical fear and greed value. And so what I did was create this Jupyter notebook that you can run and I described the fear and greed index. Uh, I described how I have this data set available and how you can get that data from this timeline. So what you can do here is look at the JSON response and so what I've done in this Jupyter Notebook here is write the Python code that shows you how to pull in this historical data and prepare a CSV data feed for use in Backtrader and how to run a backtest on it, right? And so right here, you can see in Jupyter what you do if you wanna install a package, you can do pip install with an exclamation point in front of it and it'll install a Python package. And then you can just execute Python uh, packages and uh, code as usual. And so what I did is get that base URL, gave it a start date of January 25th, 2021. So so the old data set I had stopped in 2020. So I got a new start date. I used the request library to get that data. And then I just show the structures. So if I hit play there, it actually starts up a Python environment in this notebook here. It'll install those packages and anyone I share this notebook with uh, can reproduce these results that I'm discussing. And so you can see it's installing those packages. It's installing Backtrader and actually made that request and displayed that JSON data in line here. Once we have this data, I show you how to use that data in a back test. And so what I do is get that fear and greed historical key and get the data underneath. And I prepare a CSV file name here. And in Google Colab, what you can do here is there's this file section. So you see I have sample data uh, right here. And what I can do is create a new folder for this data. So I create a new folder. Uh, let's see, I can right click here and do new folder and call it a data sets. Okay, and so I have this complete environment here and I can run this code, right? And so I get that key and then I give it a file name for my fear and greed data in a CSV. I open a CSV file and I write new rows. So I write the headers, just date, some placeholders and then fear and greed because that's the uh, format that Backtrader needs. And I separate the fear and greed index values. And what I do is just loop through, take all the fear and greed values and then write them to this file. And you see, after I run this, I have this fear and greed data set and I can download it and I can open it up in a spreadsheet here. And you can see I have all the fear and greed values all lined up for the year 2021 up till April 14th right there. And you can change the dates as needed depending on when you need the data for, right? And then I also prepared another data set that has the SPY historical values for the S&P 500. Just use Y Finance for this one. And so uh, we can get the uh, open, high, low, close data for S&P 500 and then tack on the fear and greed index on the end of each of those dates so that we can use it in Backtrader. So I run that, you see we'll get another data set, right? So if I refresh this, you see I have SPY fear and greed. So I'm gonna download that, open that up. And see, you see we have each date and then we have the values for the S&P 500. And you can see in the last column, we have the fear and greed value and you can substitute whatever other measure you're using if you wanna test that to see how it affects uh, stock prices, you can do that. And then here I've just included the Backtrader script that I had previously. We have a fear and greed strategy. We set a fear threshold and a greed threshold. And we say, um, if it's below this certain extreme fear threshold, whatever number you decide, uh, and you're not in the position you can buy. And if you're beyond uh, a certain greed threshold, you can sell just a simple thing like that. Um, you're going to actually want to combine this with some other factors. And that's what I'm going to, that's why I'm going to talk about uh, breath thrust in the next video. But uh, this is how you would just test the fear and greed index. If you would have bought and sold on extreme fear and extreme greed, then what you do is you just instantiate the Cerebro object. So it's the control center of the application. You initialize it with a certain amount of cash, say a hundred thousand dollars, and then you can test your strategy, right? So you feed it this spy combined feed and the fear and greed feed, the CSV files that we've uh, just created. We add those to Cerebro. We add our fear, greed strategy, fear and greed uh, strategy class. We run Cerebro and we can actually plot the results in line in this Jupyter notebook here, which is pretty cool. I didn't know you could actually run Backtrader in here and plot this in line, but we can get this to work. I find it's a little bit quirky here. So I had to do some weird stuff here that I got from Stack Overflow to make this work, uh, but you can actually chart this within, uh, within Jupyter notebooks. 
So that's about it for this particular video. I wanted to revisit the topic of fear and greed since we're entering a period of fear in the market. And I also just wanted to answer these questions from GitHub on how to update the historical fear and greed values. And yeah, you can do it yourself. I gave you the code right here and anyone that's interested in that, uh, feel free to update it on your own. And this is a pretty straightforward way of doing that. And you can update the SPAC test and test it out as well. And in the next video, I'm going to focus on these breath thrust indicators. And I have a whole uh, notebook prepared for that because just buying on fear isn't quite enough because there can always, always be a little bit more fear, right? What you wanna do is detect when there's a sudden change in momentum in the opposite direction that's strong enough to indicate uh, capitulation has occurred and a new bull run is starting. So stay tuned for the next video and we're going to discuss these breath thrust indicators. Thanks a lot for watching. See you in the next one.